Okay, so this is the follow-up on the euro-dollar trade. Uh, once the market got, this is the four-hour chart, and uh, once we punched into this void that's been kind of looming, and we just punch in there and retract, there was actually a trade there if you were gonna, willing to put a sell limit here, and I guess all the way up, right? Because in reality, you could have, if you're going to scale in, you could have sold into this. And every ticket's a winner that you sold in that box, those two boxes. This one would be the bigger ticket because the higher it goes, the bigger you would trade. So, and then here's, there's going to be another sell window. People will go crazy here, lose their minds, you know, all sells, of course, right? And if that happens at the end of the day, I probably get out because, well, it's about how many, how far I can go up four hours. So here's the engulf, so to speak. Although you know, for the people that are all sticklers, oh, it's not really an engulf because see here, it didn't really, dude. It's like forty percent, you know, twenty percent bigger than this. So we we're back to the pullback zone. And if you were short here, you, at some point you gotta take profits. And we're, if you go to the line chart, we're teetering on the point of uh, top becoming a bottom now. So we've, and just counting every four hours. So I think the simplest way to trade is to uh, put the line chart up and say, oh, four hours has gone by and now, here's where you could do a moving average, I think, and then you could just make uh, really simple claims and clean uh, decisions, you know. And of course, here the moving averages are going to be still pointing down, whereas you're getting structural, you're getting this, uh, well, how much more down can we go? And I could put on the uh, uh, RSI here. It's easy to see RSI, Re read it, read momentum. And this is just an index of momentum. It's only one piece of data coming in. So the, the, the more robust system is the simple system. If I insert RSI. And I know people have 14 as the default, but I'm going to tell you, I don't have time for that. I, I really want to go with the three period. A two period, okay. That's almost like CCI if you look at that. And he used to have this on the trend. They moved it. <laughs> Needs to be under trend. Now there's a relative vigor index and all this other bullshit. That's like you're going down the rabbit hole of chasing the holy grail of uh, indicators, which is just never a good idea. So we gotta put some new numbers in here. All right, so we can put three in here, just because it's. Uh, so I I studied with this RSI guy and we, we were he started he's running fourteen. And he's doing it by hand practically, whereas he had a three period RSI with a three period simple moving average of RSI. And I'm telling you what, that has to be the best oscillator. It's kind of like having an automatic transmission on your car. And I'll make this the same color as, as the chart or something close here. It'll look the same to me. Um, so here's your divergence, right? Four hour chart kind of a classic RSI um, but for most people the market's running out of momentum you don't need RSI to see it but if you were going to trade this with RSI with the reversals and the divergences which it's like a uh, different uh, divergence you can also do top bottom theory that's where you know top become bottom on RSI is kind of a cool trade so or just a good good pivot so the 50 uh, or any any one of these it doesn't have to be 50 it doesn't have to be 70 and it just so happens i have i have um, put in you can change this indicator so you can put you customize it so every 10 you see a line and you'll say oh look at all these look at all these pivots it, it would just pop out at you and um so the cause for, if you look at RSI here, coming into uh, the beginning of the week, if you, here's a great um, 
RSI uh, reversal. Now, this doesn't always show up because the four hour chart's dependent on one o'clock, five o'clock, nine o'clock, three, three of, th of those every 12 hours. And of course, you get six bars a day on the four hour chart. So you don't really have to look at the five minute. Now, people do want to do that. But if you don't have time for that, and you have, if you have a day job or you have a, um, a dog that, you know, you're doing something, ride horses, whatever. And um, you're busy. You, you don't got time for the trading stuff because who's going to sit there on a one-minute chart with their finger on the trigger trading big enough for that to to even be worth the effort? I don't know. So that this is another consideration that maybe you are trading. You're high for, I call that high-frequency trading. Just pressing the button a lot to me is high-frequency. I, I know that the other interpretation of high-frequency trading is guys that have um, satellite dishes or Yagi antennas pointed at the... Uh, exchange so when the, when the down channel is open it's still a big deal right it's kind of like oh it's horse race you know all oh, the starting gate and this thing's run on the clock these markets and if you only took signals on our side here now you could get burned you, you could um i suppose just by trading too big and then of course if you don't have an alternate plan Trading RSI just wouldn't cut it all the time because, hey, if there's no signal in RSI, can't I just put some orders in to buy low? Yeah. So being more flexible, having more options, having more, um, you, you know, you can, you feel comfortable. Executing a trade's not a big deal, right? Because you're trading so much with so many tickets, you're pressing a button. And I could have bought this pullback. Now, we were at... Um, Almost six thousand dollars. So almost made um I guess I was up a thousand dollars. And you can't see it on this chart, but if I turn the wicks on, it just boom. So that wick there. And um now we come back to I guess you could get out your uh infinite fib tool and uh, look at that. So here's our diversions and then we're looking for what? Um it goes up, but there'll be a pullback. And we can get in a pullback like this was the reversal trade here because we had that right out of the gate on Sunday night. And if you just look at the line chart, it's just the market's so, so simple. I think the candles are a bit much. So here's the topic on the bottom. Then you get your first uh, reversal, which would be the, it's more overbought at a higher at a lower price so more more of a bought at a lower price so it's more of a bought here than it is here and the price is lower and you take this value uh, at least that's the what i was shown is this to here and since it's momentum it's taking a breath then you your target should be the lowest price between these two points which is this and you extend it forward by the same math now he does it, the guy I learned from, he does it mathematically. So this, you know, it's really the price. I just have the line here showing the math. Like, in other words, all he's doing is stepping it down X because of that. Because that's the move. Then another reversal. So see the cell here? This is more overbought. And the price is lower than even here on the trend line. So we have this inversion where we get rallies and they're really they're really triggering the momentum, but the sensitivity of RSI is being triggered. And if you look here, we got divergence. So the buyers come in there and that gives you the signal. So every time you see divergence, it causes the reversal. So it's the stair stop in time. And you could trade the shit out of this thing. If you could afford to, you know, um, well, you'd have to be awake at one o'clock in the morning. You'd have to faithfully pull the trigger there. That's why if you think about the voids that the market could smash into or these um, uncharted you know, the market settles down, it explodes, and then it retracts. So is that your trade or is your trade to 
get in in the weekly RSI divergence and hold it for three months. Now, that, that's a thousand pips, right? That's a lot of money. I couldn't do it. I don't have patience. Like if I was up, like tonight, if this was real money, I'd probably go, I'm up a thousand. I'll just get out and reload. No, but reloading, I'm never going to get that low price again. So you have to have some kind of compromise between, well, is this a scalp or is this going to be one of those trades that I'm in for? No, to, to live, to have that kind of flexibility. And I guess you are if you're going to invest in gold and Bitcoin and these things that people uh, uh, think it's going to go, you know, keep going up. And even crude oil right now. So you're buying crude oil. I don't know if crude oil is up, but they say it's up. And I don't have it up in the charts, but... You know, is it really worth, um, is it, are we topping out? Oh, here's um, the Bitcoin chart. So Bitcoin, I'd be, I'd be scaling out of this trade right now. You know, where you're up about, um, off of this window, you're up pretty good, right? That's the weekly Bitcoin. But then we're going to run into a, a log jam here. There's going to be some kind of um, problem right now because you're technically at a bottom uh, that could be potentially a top right now and you could fade away and you could go down this uh, channel right it's, it's all imaginable and it all could happen and you know you could say well I guess I was pretty close on that trade but um, yeah you know I got a couple good trades in and, and actually with a 62% win rate or even a 60 whatever you can make pretty good money right because if you're uh that win rate is not based on money it's just based on what well, did you win or lose on that trade so that was the other big thing was very difficult to um because when i started trading i thought well are you winning or losing did you buy or sell and uh it's more like how many times did you buy or sell and overall i, I don't know what the, um, the amount of trades people need to I would say 20 trades, right? It's a safe sampling of, because if you just base your, they you think you're gonna win every trade, this is the hardest thing is that no matter how um, amazing your system is, every time you put a trade on, it's a potential, it's not gonna come out the way you want. But if it's a small, position so it's a big problem because if it's a small position people would say well gee that's a lot of work or a lot of thinking and why don't I just build a better trading system and then I'll trade well but it's not going to get you around the problem of accepting that that system could never trade all this crazy price action in the Bitcoin it's funny because uh, the market is exploded, pulled back, and it is in this pattern. Now, whether Bitcoin's worth anything intrinsically is irregardless because people will bid this thing up and down to kingdom come. But if you bought it at 34 and you're getting out even now, that's a pretty good trade. Or you got stopped out, right? You're trailing weekly stop. If you ran a faithful trailing weekly stop here, we're going, so you get in here, you're just a genius. Right here you buy, here's that triangle wedge. Man, just like I saw in the books. Now you waited until the middle of the year. It's just a crime. Nobody's doing this trade. There's no way anybody, well, I'm that guy. You know, I bought I bought here and I did this. <laughs> yeah. So you, so you bought here and when I, when I made this triple top, there's probably a gorgeous uh, RSI three period uh, divergence there. And then you bought here. Now, if you did do that, and then you're going to be Mr. Um, safety, Mr. Trailing Stop comes in. And he literally comes in. And of course, on the dailies, it's not going to look like this, but. Look at how perfectly you could have trailed your stop, stop, stop. Oh, I got stopped out. And therefore, I made money. And it's also coming up in the seller's window pretty hard. Anything above here, I would say, is definitely the most freak out 
And people are really uh, losing their mind here when it when it gets into this this territory. And of course, that's all right for the selling. But we keep poking up, and I I think actually above here would be the most I guess aggressive entry you could possibly get out of here because right in there you are stepping in front of this tall I don't know what to call it no man's land you know I'm just we have I mean, and all the all the pressure uh, if you look at the market, it's pressing down into this wedge before it takes off. That's going to be the, uh, you know, this is the coiling of the market. I'm sure there's some RSI diversions here. You, I almost guarantee it after years of staring at RSI. Let's see what it looks like. If this one's ever... Okay, this one's all set up. So here's your, and this is really intense. So this is the Bitcoin uh, three period RSI. That's the nice thing about RSI in a way. It's, you, you wouldn't over trade it, you know. And for the uh, no nonsense guy, if he's watching, you know, I doubt it, but triple divergence on the weekly Bitcoin. And if you draw a trend line, on the bitcoins it's going to look like uh, so you're looking for a break of rsi trend line so you break out but blammo so this breaks you know this trend line breaks before price trend line breaks you know, really an RSI, I would never run RSI unless I had a line chart. And I don't use RSI, but I can kind of, since I got the line chart up there, um, I could do the RSI thing. And I can, I can count off all the, in the, the two to five period, which means two to five bars away from zero bars. So you, you've got your zero one move up, one move down, and one move up. That's giving you the, every time it turns around, it's a period. I'm sorry, every every four hours is a period. So, but you need at least a price pulse up to get a zag, you know. So two to five period reversals or two to five period divergences. This would be um, five weeks on here. So if you're waiting five weeks for a setup. I mean, this is a patience that I don't have on a weekly chart. I just can't imagine. But we kind of all knew here, like, who wasn't saying, well, that looks really overextended. Because RSI was screaming at you that even here is your first uh, divergence, really. See, right there. Now, this is like overbought, I think they call that look at this thing this rsi must be at like almost 100 it can't quite hit 100 because it's just not part of the it can't do it but the um i think we're probably at almost 100 there and i've seen this thing go to like all like it's at like 99 point four here you know it got those points then so that's really overbought then we get a reversal i don't know if you can see this one now this is how many this is beyond a five period so it's not as uh, so-called reliable we're counting oh, here, oh here's the um top becomes a bottom on the weekly bitcoin and this is kind of like the the classic just before um all hell breaks loose. But you know, the volatility has really dried up here. And that's a heartbreaker because people want to get some, they want to get paid, you know, 
and who wants to sit in some investment? But man, right here is the, the turning point. Then it's like, oh God, we are off to the races. Then this is outside the, so I'm gonna count from here. This would be one, two, three, four, five. No, it's a five period um, uh, reversal. I'm sorry, uh, uh, that's the wrong count. We gotta keep counting until we get to, so that's five, six, seven. Okay, you know, it's seven period because from here to here is seven weeks. And there's no there's no reversal buy signal till he, till here, but this is based on this one. So here's your more overbought and lower price, and that one's uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, it's nine period reversal. It, but it, it it all it gives you is that price pulse. But this is the trend line. So when you get this reversal, you can draw a trend line here. And this trend line is supposed to hold. I did a video on this a long time ago. So yeah, you can do this stuff. <laughs> People say, well, I got in this RSI trade and I got stopped out. Yeah. I mean, well, you know, I got lost on this trade. Sure, but you'd have to have the patience. You just probably wouldn't be able to. If you say, well, does it work on the five minute chart? Yeah, but I hope you got like a hot key keyboard in front of you to get in and out of the market because that trade's like, that opportunity's gone. This is not around anymore. Yeah, so is fundamentals going to meet reality here as we, as we go up? The dollar gets crushed now into the end of the year across all four, uh, across all, um, you know forums and everything and maybe the end of the year inflation right i mean this is the if it's a belief maybe people are taking advantage of that belief system now yeah the dollar's fucked and gold's gold sold off pretty good too it looks to me like the dow jones is going to fall into this cavern and it's just going to drop into hell i mean literally because the bond market's coming in wrapped and they can't pay their bills, blah, blah, blah. All those fundamental things that people try to base a trade on, but in the end, it's it's just the, you know, would you have that much faith in fading the news or uh, going against the commitment of traders because they're all idiots? And then I heard this guy on Tim Pool uh, talking about the dumbest thing I ever heard is, well, well, the bond markets, this and that. Why do you think this this is because the smartest people in the world or are, are the richest people in the world are in this trade? You mean the Lehman Brothers guys? You mean all these fucking idiots at Bank of America? You mean those fucking idiots? They're idiots, dude. There's no fucking genius there. It's a collective mob of fuck nuttery pushing the price there, here, there. Now, for you to step inside of that... And, battle between buying and selling pressure to make money from price fluctuations because you just got to kind of get out of these trades like holding you know if you're a trader you would just get in and out but now if you're holding something yeah you're just shitting your pants so I, mean, I, I saw people in the coffee shop 2008 crash and, and they were just like oh yeah my stock I go, you should buy more you should buy more Oh no, I'm down on this trade. Yeah, I don't want to buy any more. Uh -uh. It's pretty hard, right? So why would you go take more of a beating? That's why people, that's why trading is so difficult because it's, if you're taking it as a beating, if you don't like getting beat up, <laughs> if, obviously, if you can't handle a punishment, you can't handle the reward because to survive the wick on the RSI is, but that's your signal, right? You, 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 you pull the trigger and you do it at, at the end of the day on RSI. You, you know, you just take a leap of faith there and you say, 
that's a, the other thing is that the the stop hunt entry or the mark market maker trading yeah that works but there's not always a trade there and if you're looking for a i guess a trend trade because you're kind of like are you trading really I don't know the line chart with RSI is like you really got to think about it. Whereas you don't have to think too much about buy and love for the next forty minutes. I mean, next hour, like right now, put in some buy limits that are like one pip deep. Instead of buying at the market, and have a stack of tickets for the next four hours that is in an area that you think is potentially the market could just spike down reverse you're out the trade's over and but there's not always that opportunity but then where's the market going after it spikes after the hammer where's it gonna go that that's some kind of um clearing house move a pin bar giant, giant bar and then now what at the end of the day at the end of the week and certainly these are just i mean these are monster you're waiting a long time here. I see if I can see any more. So it's kind of hard to see it. This reversal thing. Let me see if I can make a quick run through all the ones that jump out at me. Okay, we got. Uh, let's see. Yeah. So when the market really takes off here, here's the first. I kind of got match the uh, this thing about three paired RSI. It, you can put it down here, and it's just so screen economical. So the first one is going to be here's a zero. So that's one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven period. Reversal, more of a sold, higher price slightly. Kind of shallow here, but boy. And you're off to the races. This is like a reversal, I guess you could uh, kind of say. And I'm sure the daily, that's pretty good. You know, it, it's more of a sold here. And the price is definitely way higher. And then here's your big entry based on that but that's like I said that's like about a nine period reversal then we get divergence Diver divergence kicks in this is not a bad trade at the end of the week and it just seems amazing at the end of the week you sell here because it's there's and actually the divergence probably might have been on the bar just before it so maybe you sold here and um I can't tell now unless I put a dot for every so if I put it RSI and plotted it as a dot maybe on top of it and then I could get the period counts because it does matter uh, maybe if I turn on the candles so I can't really because I can't see the close can't see the bar count let's try that <sighs> candles give me the chance to see the oh I can't I got my indicator on top I just have to zoom in they're there yes yeah, so the, and when it's like this I have to take it like so I have to go on what I'm looking at try to match the uh, momentum here And this is definitely more a scrutiny. Make a divergence. Divergence. I mean, triple. Takes out the low. This is supposed to be the giant support of all supports. This trend line here is supposed to hold, but it does, and it becomes a resistance. So that's your turnover point. So the same thing on the downside. No reversals to sell, really. 
I'm sure on the monthly chart, this could be a reversal. So this could be more overbought and a lower price. And it gave us a sell off. But that was certainly the big, the big divergence here. Divergence, we get divergence, which causes uh, this, well, there, here's a real long, way beyond five period, two period reversals. So this is the more sold at a higher price. Is that a good entry? Okay, you know, and then with divergence, you know. So if you're looking at the long range, if I go to the monthly chart, that trade would probably show up on the monthly. So this could be the end of the dollar for the, I mean, people are going to sell the dollar here. And stocks could just get annihilated. And people would just go into uh, anything but the dollar, I suppose. Well, gold could come back off. It, gold got beat down, I was noticing. So that was a beat down, and that's on that's on sale right now. Get some of the end of the year for Christmas, you know. Uh, then you can say this is the uh, bottom becoming a top. Look at this. No RSI signals. How about the monthly chart? So the monthly chart has a reversal here just before it rips. And this is definitely the, the better signals can always be. This is a three period reversal. So you got zero here and then one, two, three months. And that's powerful. That's a serious momentum. But of course, not a lot of signals here. Definitely overbought there. So what has to hold here? The last known reversal is this one. And then you're going to draw your trend line off of those two pieces. And this looks like it's... Um, so that's 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 8... And a nine period reversal and if this this should be the trend line you have to hold this trend line on monthly so the bearish argument is that this is pretty fragile here and that's pretty overbought it's going to take months to get a signal if you ever get one here's a uh, you can't take your trend lines past uh, this one. This is RSI trend line. Look at this diver the divergence here, which is um, also the same signal count. And this would be the first kind of big sell off in Bitcoin. And at that point, you know, you're $15,000 in Bitcoin. People's, people are just losing their mind here, right? This is the first big. Sell off at 15,000. I don't know if anybody... Now, people probably got their ass kicked on that, right? And that's going to be this really steep divergence. So another climax that's kind of just insane. So we count from... That's zero, one, two, three, four. Four period uh, divergence. And there's no, this is, so if we had a two period RSI, we'd see the um, signals here like uh, probably more of a bot, slight lower price going down. Then this looks like a big long legged buy because this is more oversold than here. And the price is slightly higher holding this. The giant launching pad is this uh, reversal. This is a one, two, three period. And then we just rip. So that was, and that's the uh, monthly chart. Now, if you've been waiting 
two years to get in our uh, bitcoins because you're like yeah dude i'm waiting for this setup right here and of course i uh, i'm sure robot program to uh this isn't quite a cell because uh, it's kind of faint oh man that would just be so the, the and the bearish argument is that this trend line is so the trend lines are are cool because they're they're locked and they go into the future so you know what the thread the market should be holding momentum wise so it's just about how the the pace of the market how fast is it going and going to keep that pace up and if you draw a trend line on the where is it Okay, so I'm going to go back to this line chart. I'm going to go for the... The big picture, I guess you'd call it. Yeah, that's going to be... So we're in the process of challenging that monthly trend line. Kind of breaking it out. But yeah, this could be... A, it's gonna. It's just gonna take months on this chart. So not much you can say about that, but we're definitely at the apex of the triangle. But this this is the only thing that would be the uh, problem. So if you can't hold that trend line, then it's gonna be a bloodbath. All right. So we're just still sitting in this, uh, and here's the argument that the S and P. Or the S and P Dow Jones. I typically look at that because it's kind of the goober index. It's thirty stocks. It's pretty weighted. Now that's the monthly Dow Jones. And what's scary about it, I guess, if you're if you're in it, is wow. Like, look at the top on this thing. Are you kidding me? Right. I mean, Jesus. Here I got the magical Williams fractals here on the monthly. So we got a high there. And the, um, where is it? Okay. Here's the daily. And I was looking at this giant hole from hell. And considering that this would be the trap zone where it's closing higher and people oh gosh you know it's just so great up here um what's really amazing is that the corona is on this chart i'm just fascinated by this pre-corona crash at this point in the history of the stock market what would have taken a tip it so when the we start off the year everybody's kind of excited you know and uh, they're like yeah man things are going so good and look at that top top tick tommy shit going on like look at that pre-corona and where's the top become bottom guys supposed to hold this right this is the buyer's window supposedly and what's so cruel is that once you trigger and just using the Williams fractals just kind of blatantly pointing out the obvious supports that are supposed to hold actually there was some action on that one so there were buyers coming in here, and this is when people did say, hey, it's going to be okay. No, no, no. no just 15 days to get butt-fucked. How's that work again? Well, it's well, it's this new thing we came up with. It's called, well, logic was just too much work, so we just did away with logic. And reason? What are you nuts? It's way too much uh, 
I could, can hardly think that. So look at this. This is the beginning of Corona crash. So if you were buying these people's stops, look at the liquidity right here. You made money on that trade, did you not? Let's see if I can zoom in. So you got in here, right? And uh, nice. Didn't even make it back to the floor, but people are like, oh, yeah, it's going to be okay. And I bought this pullback, and I think, I think life's going to go back to normal. Now, this was pretty amazing. I remember, the one, I remember when this was happening. And right here is when Glenn Beck said, I'm going to, my, my, my wife and I want to go to the bank. We're just, I sort of caught us watching it. I'm like, you're going to, you're going to sell here. Yeah. I think it's going to go lower. Okay. You're really going to call your broker and bail on this. Why aren't you buying? Can't do it. Fundamentally. I mean, have you seen the newspapers? Can't do it. I put my stop in here. What do I look like an idiot? They'll never touch my stop down here. That's Corona thing. Something else. So the danger is for the bulls now is that just good old trend line analysis would tell you if you talk, and this is hardcore. I guess a robot could do this or a computer. Take this, and there's no other way to do this. This is the lowest low on the chart. Now, granted, you could uh, say, well, this is draw trend lines. This trend line should have held, didn't it broke? This one should have held if I just move every low forward, right? That one should have held. Here's my trend, my new trend line. Well, they broke that one. But since we have the beauty of all this history we drag it out trend line should have, oh they broke now the longer the trend line the more it's supposed to so-called be respected but all it is to me is the cordoning off of this zone and saying being able to say things like Boy, that, that, that's been going up for a long time. What about all this space down here? Like, what about this space? Do you think we could ever fill it? Like, what would it take to... And just like this, right? We built this wall of worry. That's what they call the stock market. This, this is going up, a wall of worry. And then one day, some dumb shit bureaucrat fucking around with viruses i mean these people have they're so wealthy they have so much time on their hands they're dicking around with building like a hobby virus and they're, what the fuck it's like your neighbor decides you know what i think i'm gonna do i'm gonna start a nuclear reactor try to save money get off the grid you know and i got a little mini reactor oh don't no i know your dog's glowing but it couldn't have anything to do. You're good. You're fine. Don't worry about it. So this cascading kicks in. You know, hmm. what's the first top bottom that should hold? What is the first? And this could be the most mind blowing. I mean, look at it this way. Fundamentally, you got this fucking dumb, or I would say corrupt. This guy who's just a complete gangster running the country. They thought Trump was a gangster? Dude, this guy, this guy is so... He's nothing but the slimiest politician. He's like... The, the distillation of all politicians' shithead fucking stupidity and refined into, like... He includes every fuck nut idea because he's so old, right? He's got all that, in the, and now they just become a circle of talking points of bullshit. And it's enough to crush 
uh, if he's going to raise interest rates, and you, you, I, apparently you got this liberal dumb fuck yelling. These people are so funny because five years ago they said, our goal is to create inflation. Well, there you go. They got it. And this was the thing. They've been arguing for six years. Uh, uh, has anybody watched the news? It just, it just, it's, it just pisses you off because you go back four or five years ago, just do a time search. There could be a deflation. Even, I mean, the Republicans, all these morons. Look, well, the biggest fear is a deflationary spiral. You mean shit gets cheaper? How is that a problem? And now, oh, there's inflation. Well, there is and there isn't. Okay. <laughs> I don't have that problem where I live. We don't have gas going. It's still $3 a gallon. I mean, yeah, it was too. Don't forget. Some of these numbers are bullshit all day long because during Corona, nobody was driving. I got gas for a dollar. What was it? A dollar fifty or some crazy? Because, yeah, the fucking lockdown. It's like that ad, that gold ad you hear where they say gold was up four hundred percent last year. Yeah, you fucking found a place on the chart. Yeah, last year. But you're not giving. Can I see the chart, please? Oh yeah, but then it retraced, and yeah, if you or the fluctuation was that much, sure, it it it, it didn't close up there. It's not there now. It gained four hundred, but then it gave it back. These are just bullshit ads, and people really fall for this stuff. I think the only people that buy gold are just people that just kind of just have always been there. The ads not. Uh, maybe the ads are making people do stuff like these these uh, take experimental um, experiments in a liquid form kind of uh, when I was a kid they used to send out samples of shampoo and stuff and toothpaste they put it in your mailbox I was like man that's crazy I mean that could be spiked with something bad right so what would it take to push the Dow into this hole and just, we just go boom, 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 and probably come back now, if we can come back to the pre-corona highs, which was the all-time, all-time high in the stock market at that point, we actually eclipsed that, which is amazing, right? At this point, Trump is still, so Trump uh, had to experience the true stupidity of the mob and he was left to deal with that and he had to ride that storm out and this is the whole all the way into the election here amazingly I'm screaming back and trump is saying dude we are back to the we are we're about to take out this support this bottom becoming a top we're just about to eclipse that and here you go bam now here is the new highs that is the most critical price we could come back there that could absolutely be a walk down to this long term it's a weekly chart that, that monthly chart so the NASDAQ and I said this last two weeks ago Man, these things these things are just out of control. Nothing other than insane. So this will be quite the story. And we're way up. Here's that uh, trend line from the weekly. There's the trend line that you almost unmaintainable. I think this rate of change is just ridiculously ridiculous. That is just wow. Look at that Corona spike coming back. Coming back to this. So we could definitely get that situation. If you just zoom out one notch, 
it looks so ready to crash. It doesn't take much to get that look about it. Let's see, get my high keys running here. No. Nope. Nope. Right. Trying to get rid of these objects. So, NASDAQ. Wow, same situation, even worse. This will take it on the chin real hard. That is an astounding historical, I'm sorry, but I tell my friends, they don't care. I say, have you seen the NASDAQ on a linear chart? I know logarithmically, this would be smoothed out because you know, you're way up in the big dollars and percentage of what, but that is an astounding, I mean, it looks like Bitcoin, you know. All markets do this stuff. And since the future is unknown, I'm just so curious. Look at this. This is the monthly NASDAQ. Is this overbought? Are, this is as ridiculous as people getting vaccinated and then getting a booster and a booster. And this is like the fucking 80th booster. I think you're going to die. What do you think's in that vaccine that is so magical that it kills you? What is in it? Take a look at this. Now here is the phase we could be in right now. We are here. We've got our third booster. Eight more to come, 40 lockdowns, and we'll just start shooting people on site if we see them sneeze on the beach. Sneeze on an island that nobody's supposed to know you're there. Imagine where we could be on prices here. Could we be coming back to this on the NASDAQ? That would, people lose their mind, wouldn't they? With it, I'm freaking out the program. I'm so zoomed in, MetaTrader can't, that won't let me draw that box. <laughs> Unbelievable. I never really zoomed out like that before, but yeah, into the future. We've come back to here in the NASDAQ. I would say that would be the biggest so-called reset. Wow. The first place I think people are going to really wonder is when we get to here. If you get to there, that'll mean that counting the years out, so it's a year from here to here. Sideways market for two years. Explosion. People's, wow. Two years of high volatility here. This is all, you know, Trump insane look at this bit up end of the year smash down i don't know what i don't know what this is um well that's that's our corona that's our corona on the monthly so in perspective if you had this chart up if, if only um, what's his name? If only Glenn Beck could have this monthly chart up. You know, well, I plotted this out, and it looks to me like, I don't know, it just looks like a mild sell-off. I mean, sure, it's down. If you're watching that real-time on this chart, of course, at that point, we didn't have any data up here, so to be fair, you'd have to do this because you can't you can't see that it, it all turned out more better so to be fair we'd have to isolate that price just by fixing the scale I was afraid of that okay so at that point you did not know that and this is all you knew right this is your chart at the time And this is choppy, scary, 
whammy any blam blam price action up here i'm sure this was pretty scary because all the trend traders would prefer this nice mellow so here's the 2000 sell-off and this is supposed to be all your computers were going to lock up it turned out the market this is the climax in the nasdaq this is the tech bubble bursting then the, then the big um, panic on the mortgage um, stuff invaded all these fractals. 2008 crash. People lost their minds. I'm sure people thought, well, it's going to take out this and we're going to die. Or we're, we're doomed. It's going to take this price out. And that was another people were just oh boy but it became the we had a nice double bottom there probably divergence I can see then we we're going to challenge this this floor here and this is going to be the big um, pivot Kim, the sellers are supposed to come in right there and they don't they punch through to here come back now this is the new top become a bottom and this one i suppose would be the the big the highest uh high oh, but this we really do have to be fair and carry this high forward so when you made the new high here, this is the new high and people were going, that is insane. And they're selling into that. And the bears are saying, yeah, that, that the market's going to crash. If it ever takes this out, we are doomed. We're coming back to here. That's probably what the argument there would have been. So these are amazing times uh, with these giant swings and the amount of, uh, but there is a there are major turning points you know and this is uh i suppose the trend traders would have loved to or the turtle traders you know they love this kind of market this is a beautiful trend now the vix the volatility index probably kicks up here and people are like you know it's a little toppy and maybe everybody sold here and of course you can't blame them right and now they never they never got to ride this move now that the problem with that move is that's a nice trend too but then look at how brutal kind of hard right and that's the corona and you're in your selling here i'm sure people panicked here and sold oh yeah this thing's this thing's tanking. And the, uh, let's see, go to the, and, and that, so it continues up. And you're saying, man, this is just, you know, that's what I was saying. I cannot fucking believe these prices. Nobody can. How's this story going to end? Well, well, so, would you really think, I mean, on God's green earth, that thing's coming back. I'm, I'm not even waiting for a retest. That may be a, just like this one here, it may be one of these situations. You climax, you want to get no double top, right? You hit this, bam, I guess it comes back up. But like this one, you hit this, Coronaville. It's amazing. Like when you look at Corona on this, you just compare that to everything. And then he, this is astounding. But this is the, the uh, NASDAQ, right? So this is a different animal. The NASDAQ's pretty crazy. And this is all the tech. Who's buying here? I said that here. Who's buying here? Apparently people are buying there. Not me. I just, I don't know. That's a 
brutally steep. How long is that going to last? I don't trade NASDAQ, but... Man, that is the most vicious. Actually, everything here, pretty calm. This gets crazy. For you, here comes Trump. Man, I'm telling you. Look at, if you just take the chart from there, you just handed. What if Bitcoin came out of the gate like that? That would be amazing. People, what are people going to say if they had that much data and they're, they're just looking at their decisions based on, okay, well, the last four, just give me the last eight years of data. All right, that's, uh, oh, that's, uh, how are we going to trade that? I'd say uh, put some sell limits in at least on the way to the top. So that's what I do. I put sell limits in that box. So a little bit now. So scaling in would be sell a little bit now and then um, sell more in limits. Just sell a little bit so you can say you're in the you're in, you shorted it. Look, I sold. I got a trade going. You're probably going to go underwater on that, but it's not your whole account. It's not ten percent. It's just going to be that enough to. And if it does tank, which I sold silver at fifty dollars on Sunday night when it's climaxing, but I only sold a very small position. <clears throat> I thought, gosh, I mean, it was less stress, you know. To sell a small position at such a high price, too. I thought that was inconceivable. That price so far, I think that's the high, but 50 bucks silver. But it's just a churning sideways mess now. I think let's SP. What do we got here? SP. Let's see. Uh, Oh, German. So this is supposed to be the bellwether. The DAX is in way up in the nosebleed section. That's scary looking. We got the... Uh, Euro to the euro got pounded against the yen. That looks like a nice buy right there. For our chart daily, looks like a nice buy. This looks like a nice smooth market. Euro to the yen. 100 pip grid on these big, big black lines. Anyways, uh, so it's about uh, five in the morning. I'm gonna go take another nap. As as ICT would say, as you were, <laughs> as you were. <laughs> Before you was. <laughs>